Well, hello and welcome, and we are lucky enough to have the man, the new Bellator light heavyweight champion of the world, Corey Overtime Anderson. Corey, it is so good to see you. You had a war in Belfast, and there's not a whole lot of things you can do in Belfast that are a lot of fun. (laughs) So I guess the war was the only answer because you and Carl Moore went at it. Yeah, it was pretty fun. It's more than I expected, to be honest. I ain't gonna lie. I thought gonna mold over him. He's gonna be like not like he's gonna be easy, but I just figured he's gonna dwindle under the pressure on top and just let me start punching away eventually. But he never did. He fought all the way to the final bell. To the final bell. It's been a long time, man. It's been a long time. You've been chasing this title, and you were so close with the first Nemkov fight. I mean, you were starting to take over. You had that fight in basically in your hands. You were just. You could have just been in cruise mode. You were dominating that first fight. And then the headbutt happened, yeah. and then the second fight happened. But how good does it feel to say world champ? Feels great. The monkey's off my back. You know what I mean? Like uh, <laughs> all week doing media and all, everything they kept asking. Like you you fought five or uh, five guys that became world champion that you beat, yeah. and you've yet to have it. Like, how do you feel? And like that, I never thought about it like that. And I gotta get mine too. Like they all had they built Sean O'Connell. Yeah, I'm black with Glover Sixer, all these guys. Like, and I ain't got mine yet. Like, if I don't get it, like, I don't know if I can live with myself, you know, and to get to the point. It's like, is it God telling me I'm not supposed to be a champ? And then <laughs> to finally get it, it was like, yes, we did it. It's like, you can never take it away. You can never take it away, no matter what. It's mine. No, they can never take it away. And I, I mean it. When I, I looked at the fight before it ever happened. When I heard of, of it, I have a lot of respect for Carl Moore. I know he's big and strong. He hits hard. He's got a good jujitsu game. But I looked at it and I said, man, he's going to use a lot of strength trying to stop what Corey's going to be doing, trying to uh, wrestle and take him down, and he's going to get tired. And I think Corey will get him by the third round. And, man, I'll tell you what, he had a gas tank. Because you are known for having a gas tank, brother. Everyone out there that knows who Corey Anderson is knows, man, you can go. And he was step for step with you in that fight. I was watching you breathe between rounds and I'm watching him and I'm like, I'm amazed at the, at the condition that he's in. Cause I know what Corey brings and I know the pressure that he brings. And man, that guy was there. I was so impressed. You won the title. Absolutely beautiful performance, but Carl Moore didn't lose anything in that fight. I think his stock went up with what he demonstrated <clears throat> in that fight against you. 100%. Me and my wife said the same thing. Like his stock definitely went up. Like, cause I'm sure everybody thought, like, oh, if Corey takes him down early, he's going to wear him down and just put him away. I know I thought that. Like, if I get this guy down, like, he's seen all his fights. Like, he'll take guys down and he'll get swept and he'll up on the bottom at the end of the third. He's tired. Like, if I get him down, it's going to be a wrap. But when I got him down, he's still fighting, fighting position, trying to push my hand down for the triangle. He got the arm bar. I was like, I'm, even then, like, I'm with head position and third position. I'm going to keep head position, stay chest tight. Keep our weight heavy on him by third or fourth and fifth. He ain't gonna fight back. I'm gonna start grinding, pounding in. Nope, got him down. Like, all right, now the time. He was still moving his hips, recovering guard. Like, God dang, like, stop moving. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, come on. His, his fight previously, though, against Carl Brexton, like, he. He looked exhausted going in, like to the second round, and then he kind of gutted it out, and then he got into the third round. He looked; they were it was they were both tired, but I got that takeaway, and we were there. And John, I was like, "This is this should be a no brainer for anybody on the betting odds. Anybody thinking, man, this guy's got a chance to, to hang with Corey for five rounds." I'm going to go back on what John said. He came in shape. He came ready to fight. Where was it in the fight, though? that you had to turn that switch and go, okay, this isn't the fight that I thought. I need to make sure that I keep my pace and I make sure that I keep pushing on him as this fight goes on. What round was that? What time was that? Do you, do you even recall? I don't know what round was when he threw that submission up and I realized, like, he's still here. Like, he's still, like, 100% listening to his coach. I heard his coach. I was in his, his corner most of the time, taking him down on his cage. Like, here's coaches, Kavanaugh and Will. They was telling him the right stuff. They was telling him what to do. I was like trying to shut it down. They would say, shift your hips to the left. I try to circle him to the right, like break his hips. I was like, dang. And he was listening. He was responding. So I'm like, yo, he's not tired. That's a sign of your cardio is on point. If you responding as the coach says something right away, it's like he's he's coherent and he, he's conditioned. And uh, yeah, it was just 
right there when he threw that arm up and he had it and it was tight. I was like, oh, shoot, this is going to be a different fight. Like, I just got to stay smart. Once I got out of that, and I was like, no more mistakes. No more mistakes. I don't care. Don't start trying to push for the finish. Don't get greedy. Let's just get this belt. Let's just get this belt. That's all I can tell myself. Let's just get this belt. No more mistakes. Let's just get this belt. Don't don't worry about trying to be excited. Don't worry about the grind. Let's get this belt. I mean, I didn't want to be boring, but, like, be smart. Don't get any positions because he's alert this whole time. Most guys that start making mistakes, and he even though he was on his back, he was always <clears> here <throat> fighting and fighting for a dominant position, like to throw up a submission. In the first round, you guys were going at it in the stand-up, and he landed a, a high kick to your head. How hurt were you at that time? It rocked me. Like I said, I told the coach, like, well, okay. he was fine. Like, nah, I was fine, but I was hurt. Like, if if he would, like, hit that head kick and it went to, like, a flurry, like, I was just so, like, I probably would have been off balance and probably would have buckled or fell, hit the fence and dropped or something because I was spinning a little bit. But as it hit and I started trying to move again, I told, like, as I was moving, I could feel I was, like, I was losing balance myself. So I told myself for a second, just, just put your hand tight to it and look him in the eyes. Like, put the game face on, like, you not hurt. Make him think like you about to come at him. Open your eyes wide like you about to come at him. <laughs> and uh, this way can this way can stop for one second. And when he stopped, he threw a hook, and it kind of like bounced off my glove. I'm like, all right, let's just push him to the cage and recover, recover for a second. And once we got after that, it was good. But initially, when that kick hit, like it didn't hit the head, it wrapped around my neck and hit the back of the head. That's the one that gets you the most. And I was like, oh, is it ring, ring, ring? <laughs> like, the phone ringing, but nobody was picking up. <laughs> but how how difficult is it um fighting out like a lot of trying to break it down for people that have never been out of the country or people that uh have have been fighting but haven't fought quite out of the country yet this is a big time fight fighting five rounds but your preparation do you change anything in camp like in terms of okay i'll be fighting at this time during the day versus this time did you do any of that like do you hit mitts late at night to make up the time difference or do you try to adjust once you get there and then how difficult was it for you to make that adjustment once you were there I mean, I just went out a little earlier, but uh, as for training, I just trained from dark to dark, literally every day of the camp. I would get up in the dark, like 5 o'clock, get to strength condition at 6 or whatever it is at 6, and I wasn't coming home from the last practice to like 9, 9.30, and I'm up late, so I was just up all day long. So it didn't really matter what time. I felt like it was going to be okay because I knew it would be 12 o'clock here, and there would be 5, and I would always train at the time anyway, so I would be up and ready to go. But the sleep schedule, that was something that took me a while. I think it wasn't until the night before weigh-ins, or not Wednesday night, Tuesday night, because I had been there since Friday. Tuesday night, I finally was able to get a night of, a full night of sleep. But then the next day, it was like the weight cut night. And you know how that is, Josh. You're not sleeping after mm -hmm. the weight cut. It's like you waiting. I got my alarm set to get up early and finish that weight cut, and I just ended up being up for about six, seven hours, just looking in the dark ceiling and everybody around me sleeping and, <laughs> Yeah. I'm so <laughs> like just hungry and thirsty. Like, oh, it's time we just hurry up, please. So I can yeah. finally get another night of sleep. And even now, it's like I finally started sleeping and now I'm going to bed like 10, 11 here, and I'm waking up every morning at like four o'clock. I was like, what are you doing? Like, I, I'm up now. It's like yeah. <laughs> I'm, on I'm, I'm, I'm on Irish Irish time, man. Yeah, it's like it's gonna take a while to repent. So that is definitely if you've never done it, it's it's a pain in the butt. I heard I heard you sleep better if you just put the belt like right next to your ear and you just kind of like you just, <laughs> just kind of cuddle a little, little bit. I heard I heard you sleep better. <laughs> it's kind of hard. It's kind of yeah. kind of heavy and, it hard is. and cold. Yeah. It's not like a nice uh, warm bed. Uh, um, I noticed For, a lot of support. Sorry, John. Uh, no, I, I noticed a lot of support from uh, you know from Eddie Alvarez, from Frankie Edgar, from your whole team, man. They sorry, it was man. one of those things. That it was kind of like a monkey off their back as well. Um, the, your career in the UFC and then now your career in Bellator and this felt like you were right there knocking on the door in the UFC. The, how much does it mean to you that the fact that like they've supported you from that time to this time and then on top of it too, like, do you, do you kind of feel like, man, if I would have stayed in the UFC, I'd be champion probably by now if I'd have just kept winning. Don't worry about the fight politics. Don't worry about, you know, feeling the, the pressure of having to stand, but just doing what I what you've been doing here in Bellator. Do you feel like you would have eventually came? Yeah, not no feel. I know. Like I know for a fact I would have been a champ. You know what I mean? You saw what I did to Glover, and right after I left, Glover goes up and he gets the title shot and he wins. It's just like I know if I went and did what I was supposed to do and just win, 
mm-hmm. I would have got there, but I was trying to speed up the process and try to be excited and it cost me, which is like I said in the title fight. Like if it's originally, I was like, I'm gonna strike, I'm gonna try to get this finished. We got to the point where I had the head kick landed first, like, all right, we're gonna go to what we're gonna do. We get trying to strike, we're gonna go the easiest path of resistance. We're gonna take him down and maul him. And we got him like, all right, we got him here. Let's ground him pound. And he was fighting control. And through the submission, I was like, all right, well, it ain't going to be easy. But let's just do what we good at. Control. Do not let him up. Wear him down. Throw some shots here and there. Settle back down. Chest pressure. Head position. Control the hand. Come up a couple shots. Settle back down. Just be smart. Don't worry about trying to be excited and get the finish. Let's just get this belt. We can worry about everything else and revamp it when we get home. But right now, let's get this belt. That was <laughs> Once he hit me with that arm, but all I thought from there was like, let's just get this belt. Like I, I thought it was over. No mistake. He had the armbar. I thought it was a wrap, and it like literally it flashed in my head. I told Eddie Alvarez, "Say it was only two seconds, but it felt like thirty seconds." And that thirty seconds, my whole career flashed in my head, like getting knocked out, the Nimco fight, the fights I let slip away, the fights like I won and didn't capitalize on. And I got nowhere in my head. I just started screaming like, "I'm not losing this fight!" <laughs> like in my head, I just woke up. Like, let's go. And once I got out, I was like, "All right, let's just say." No mistake. Stay solid. Let's get this belt. We can worry about everything yeah. else later. And uh, like I said, it felt it was definitely a big monkey off the team's back. Ricardo Almeida, when he came back from Florida, before the fight was announced, he said, Corey, you know one thing I want to say? Like, I've been with a lot of guys. We had a world champs and everything. But only thing, it would not feel right if I could never say Corey Anderson was a champion. Mm-hmm. Like, we got to – I'm going to make sure I'm here. I'm going to be out there with you early for the next fight. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you're ready because if you don't get the belt, I wouldn't feel right. Like, there's nobody I've ever watched work hard on you. There's nobody that's been through the ringer like you and done what you've done that deserves the belt more than you. Mark Henry said the same thing. He had a huge infection in his foot. He almost didn't make it. He's like, I got to see it. I got to see the belt be around you, but I have to. Before I can finish coaching, anything is over, I have to see you get wrapped with the belt. Like, that's the only thing. Frank Yeager and everybody, the next morning we had breakfast, and they all said, man, don't it feel good to wake up once and finally say, yeah, we did it. Instead of, man, yeah. what if? <laughs> and I was like, you yeah. know what? Yeah. That's as real as it comes because how many times have we woke up like, man, if only, man, if only, man, one more second, oh, man, three more seconds. And now nah, it's like we literally, yeah. there's nothing to say. We just celebrate having drinks, eating breakfast, and with smiles on our faces. It was great. Let me ask you this. When when the whole Bellator PFL merger thing happened, were you concerned that you were going to kind of like get left outside of that for a little while and not get the title fight? And then Nemkov decided, you know, early he was going to put the title down and go to a heavyweight. Was there any indication you were going to get this shot right away? Or did, were you kind of like just waiting and out, out, in the, out in the dark? I mean, I had talked to Mike Kogan. I stayed in pretty good contact with him when things start happening. I see stuff like the Nemkov when he announced he was vacating. I had been talking to Kogan leading up to us fighting in November. We're supposed to do the trilogy in Chicago. And Kogan hit me up on Monday. Like, we're going to announce it Thursday. Or Kogan, somebody, we're announcing it Thursday. Like, I bet. And then Wednesday, Nemkov did that announcement. His media is his move to heavyweight. Kogan hit me up like, yo, this is news to me. I'm like, yo, what? we just talked about this the other day. He said, yo, we talked to him. Everybody was on, on board. We thought it was set. I don't know what happened. And then uh, I thought, so what now? He's like, you still going to get a title fight. He said, you have my word. You have my word. This is before the buyout fizzle. You have my word. Your next fight is for the title. That's my word. This is before the buyout was like official. And we're trying to find something. He's like, what about Johnny Evelyn? I guess that was a possibility. Or Phil Davis again. It's throwing all these names. And all of a sudden, the buyout happened and the fight didn't happen. And then I was like, yo, what now? He's like, if I stay with, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure. I told I gave you my work. I'm going to make sure you earned it. You're going to get what you earned. And he did it. But before, like, we didn't know if he was going to go, if he was going to stay. Like I told my wife, like, at the end of the day, whatever God's plan is, we ain't going to sweat it. We're just going to, if we got to fight again, we got to fight again. If we jump in the PFL tournament, we're going to jump in the PFL tournament. But let's not even worry about it. Let's just keep our cool and just wait. Just wait and see what happens. Wait till the phone ring. And we'll go from there. Have they talked to you about potentially who might be next? Because the, you are, a lot of the guys have entered into the PFL tournament now with that contract. Like Phil Davis. Yeah, so Phil Davis. <laughs> and, I mean, I would imagine, to be honest, I, I, you're not you sh- you're probably not waiting until the end of the year to fight again, trying to collect that check. It's the best time to get the money and right now, being active. So, um, have they talked to you at all about potential you know, next opponents? 
No. Nothing. I ain't thought about it. I haven't even watched the last fight yet. I'm just focusing on <laughs> just taking it over right now. You know, I don't want to. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy another week before I watch the fight because the moment I watch the fight, if you know me, like I said, I'm just, I'm my own worst critic. So I'll be back in the gym trying to fix everything right now. And that's when overtime click in. It clicks in. Next time I'm in the gym for three, four times a day and I'm in there all day. I don't want it. I want to be able to spend time with my family right now with my son. Like, I've been taking him to the gym with me. I've been going to all the gyms and sponsors and letting them all share the belt and take mm-hmm. pictures. And he was just with me today. And just he just wanted to play, you know, all camp, all fight camp. I would come home, train him from dark to dark. I come home to grab food and shower and go back to the gym. He's like, Dad, can we go outside and play? Daddy, can we go ride the bike? Like, man, da- Daddy can't. Daddy got to go to work. Daddy got to go to work <laughs> so we can win. And I can see his face. He don't understand, but he was a little upset. Like, yeah. I just want to play. I just want to play. And Daddy always busy. So now I just want to. Take that time away where I'm not busy and just hang on my boy. You know, take my little don't blame, don't blame me at all. Take all the time you need with your with your family, brother. Yeah, because my son is five now. And it's crazy. He grew yeah. so fast. And I don't want to miss out on stuff. You know, eventually he's going to start school and I'm going to walk away from the game. But I want to see his Dave, time now as a kid. Dave, can you pull up the PFL light heavyweight tournament so I can see who's in that tournament? <clears throat> We're going to take a look at this. I mean, there's there's some names in here. You know, outside of Phil Davis, I mean, I really feel like Phil may he's going to potentially come away with this thing. Um, yeah, was Rob, there any conversation with you? Rob Wilkinson's damn good. Yeah, he is. He is a tough, he is a tough dude. Is has there been any was there any conversation about you potentially entering into it? Yeah, Ali had called me and asked me like if PFL if PFL called and signs you right now, would you go? I'm like if my money going to be the same and I can get to a belt, <laughs> whatever. And he was like, your, your contracts, they say, they buy a contract out, whatever. I was like, well, whatever. I told him, the main goal for me is to get the belt. My main priority is to take care of my family. So whichever is going to get me to those two the fastest, they're going to go. So the PFL's tournament starts first, and I can start getting paid and start working my way back to a belt, we'll do that route. But if the Bellator fight comes first, where I get the title and the belt, and my contract go up and I keep defending and making more money, we're going to go that route. And like he said, all right, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to have dinner and talk to Kogan and talk to Pete and all these guys, see what they want to do. And uh, the Bellator opportunity came first. So let's do it. That's where I'm going in. Wherever the money is, in the belt. Let's go. Don't blame me. It's smart. It's all about being busy. When you're busy and you're active, you're a better fighter. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's all of that. You know, the repetition just makes it to where you just flow better in the fight. And so... Other than spending time with your family, keep fighting as much as you can. I understand the whole family part. That's important. 100%. Father father time is catching up. You know, I'm 34 now. (laughs) And before you know it, I'll be 35 and 36, and I'll be like John. He's old. You know what I'm saying? That's it, dude. I want to stay active. As active as I can before that time to start ticking, and I can't stay as active anymore. When you, one of the things that, I look at that as really kind of cool as far as the PFL and Bellator being, you know, one comp one entity, basically, if you're looking at it is all of the guys that you see in this tournament are possible opponents for you. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like, Oh, he fights in the PFL. Well, yeah, he is going to go. These guys are going to go through the season tournament and stuff, but every one of them is a possible opponent because they're talking about doing that, uh, Bellator yeah. versus PFL championship series yeah. every year at the start of the year. So are you going to be watching the PFL fights and seeing these guys as they're going along guys, you know, that you have some of you seen before, but you've seen like, you know, Impa Kasanganai, he was the champion last year. Rob Wilkinson was the, the champion the year before at two Oh five. These guys got a lot of talent. And then even Sadabu C going up from welterweight to light heavyweight, he skipped middleweight. Yeah. He's, a, he's a talented guy. You're going to be watching him? Yeah, of course. I, I watch all fights. Every organization, if it's on TV, I'm always watching. I'm a student of the game, always learning, paying attention to people. You know, you just – you never know what you can learn and what you can see. It could be somebody that can shock you or somebody in a lower weight that can do something like, oh, I think I can use that. So I'm always watching. And I'm definitely going to watch the tournament, especially now with, like, side going up to light heavyweight. Like, that's crazy. But I had to train with him when I was in Vegas this camp. And he's a big, he's about seven pounds lighter than me at the time. I'm like, yo, how you fight 70, bro? Yeah. <laughs> and like, he was, he's a big 70 pounder. So if he can go out there and do damage, that'd be, again, hats off to him. I'm going to be keeping an eye on all of them. 
Yeah, because you got Rob Wilkinson, you've got Phil Davis, you got Impa Kasanganai, you got Alice Polizzi. Then I'm gonna rotate on down here. You got Sadabu C and Joshua Silvera Silvera. You got Shoe Face. Is it Shoe Face? Or it's Shoe Face, right? Not Horse Face. We kept saying Horse Face <laughs> oh, for a while. Face. It's no, it's Shoe Face. Simon Biong. Carlos Jr. Simon Biong is tough as well. He's a tough, scrappy fighter. He's coming out of coming out of Bellator. Yeah. And then um, some good fights. Yag Shamuradoff yeah. and who I'm not familiar with Jacob uh Nido. I haven't seen him, so I gotta actually look more into him. But those are those are some good fights, man. Right there, those they have a good bracket right now lined up uh, for the for the light heavyweights. It makes it makes. Uh, let's see, we're also down here. You got some other guys that are backups. But I mean, out of all those guys, though, I mean, like when you take a look at them, Impa should be probably an eighty five pounder. He's fought at seventy. So he's fought at eighty five, two hundred five. He won the tournament last year. Uh, came up short against Johnny Eblen. But he he should be probably walking around an 85 pounder. Alex Polizzi, yeah, no. he's not a big 205 pounder. He's the same he's thing. He's the same thing. Very uh, true. Same exact size. You know, Sadabusi yep. can make 70, probably would rather have an 85 pound division. I kind of look like they're they're laying the groundwork for someone like a Johnny Eblen to come in for a for a middleweight tournament next year. They just didn't have enough time to set one up for this year. But when I when I look at these guys, real realistically, it's Rob Rob Wilkinson and Phil Davis, uh, Yag Shamiradov, and I haven't seen who Jacob Nado is and who he is. But I mean, those are your t those are your probably your top guys in terms of uh, real legit two hundred five pounders. Do you I mean, do you know anything about them? Have you seen them? I know with Yogs you, know, you have. <laughs> I know you I have really, with Yogs. Yag Shamiradov fought him. Phil Davis, yeah. I fought him. Uh, Sadi I was training with him in jiu -jitsu. I never mm -hmm. really sparred with him because he was a 170, but we did jiu-jitsu and grappling together. And like I said, the other guy, I don't know who he is, but like mm -hmm. I said, they all potential and worthy opponents. They win the tournament, you're a worthy opponent, obviously. You won. You won the top guys. It's like, I'm not just giving it to anybody. You know, I'm just going to keep my eye on them all. You never know. If somebody get hurt, I might have to fight one of the other ones. Say, Phil wins the tournament, but he ended up getting hurt. They bring Rob in. Or Rob wins the tournament, he ended up getting hurt. They bring the next person in. But yeah, everybody in there, has things that they're really good at. Rob, one thing I think he's good at is similar to me, putting pressure with strikes to his takedown. Like, I was studying a lot of his film because they called me to fight in the PFL versus Bellator and they wanted me to fight him. I said yes, he said no. Like, I watched him, like, yo, this would be a pretty good fight because we fight the same way. We both striking and to get to our takedowns. We're not going to stand there and just strike to strike. We're striking for a purpose. Our striking is our hand fighting. You know, that's like, so that was a fight I was looking forward to, but he said no. Um, Phil Davis, we already saw that fight. I thought we were going to have to fight again. I was preparing for that. Yak Shmuradov, I've seen him put something out there before after me and Carl Moore's fight was announced saying he's going to – something in Russian, but it translates like I'll be back or something like he's going to come – or Turkish, sorry. I said Russian before, and they tried to behead me. Turkish thing, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> he said something to translate to where I'm going to be back saying like after the tournament, he's going to try to come get the belt from one of us. So everybody is capable to get the, sh the shot, but – uh. Getting the shot and winning the shot is completely different. I'm just going to stay ready and prepared for all of them, no matter who it is, no matter who comes to the tournament or somebody they sign new, I'm going to be ready to keep this belt at home. Well, let me ask you this. Back in October, Bellator 300 was supposed to have four title fights. Bader was supposedly going to defend his heavyweight title against Linton Vassell. Linton Vassell had to pull out. You went out there and you tried to step up and say, hey, man, I'll take the fight right now. Because yep. you had already previously had a fight with Bader in the light heavyweights. What about, have you talked to anyone about possibly getting a shot at the heavyweight title against Ryan Bader? I have not talked, I haven't talked about anything. Like I said, after the fight, we, <laughs> Nothing, we were so focused on the fact we finally got the belt. I didn't ask no questions. I didn't ask, <laughs> it's, not, I didn't ask for my I'm check. a happy man. It was happy. That was it. All but, right, that's good. Uh, yeah, we'll worry about all that later, but that would be something. I'm down for it. I'm sure they're going to probably try to give it to Nemkov before me or Nemkov going to try to get it before me. But uh, if I have no fight at 205 and I just want to say active, that was, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not against it. I'm not going to run from the 205. I was like, oh, I'm going double champ now. If there's somebody who herb the shot, yes, let's fight Corey, for the people. Corey, think, think, think about that night where you were wide awake and everyone was sleeping around you and you, you were starving. You wouldn't have to do that. Yeah, you I wouldn't have to do be that. happy. I'll be fat. I'll probably have a burger in the bed. So, y'all want a bite? Want some French fries? Uh, <laughs> so, speaking about being double champ, 
What's your take on what's going on right now in the sport with all these guys just trying to jump the division to the next one up? Basically, after they've won the title, they haven't even really walked out of their out of the arena yet, and they're already talking about fighting the next the, the next division up. Like, what's your take mm-hmm. on like all I, that? I mean, like I said, I won't do it if somebody there to fight me for the belt. I'm gonna fight for the belt. But when Connor did it, Connor never defended his 45 belt. He won a 55 a 45 belt, went up to 55 and won it. Now everybody else want to do it, but you're not Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor is a special, he's a special entity. You know, he's an asset that can never be remade or replaced. And he could do what he wanted to. But the fact everybody saw that, and not everybody wants to do it. Instead of defending their belt, they want to go up and fight for the next belt and then maybe come back and do both or maybe try to go for the third. No, defend your belt for a while. I feel like in order to say you earn your double champ opportunity, you had to defend your belt at least twice. At least twice. Because this guy's not going to do that want that belt. They hungry for that belt. They they want that as well. So it's the fact that you're not fighting. Now the belt is being held up. Or they're going to do an interim belt. And that's not the same because you didn't beat the champ. So I also talked to John about this, though. But I said, like, there's also guys that were stuck in the division, like a John Fitch. They were stuck in the division, had to fight everybody, 11-fight win streak to even get there. So they pretty much cleared out the division to get there. So there's really no one for them to fight. There's maybe one person, you know, that's kind of lingering in there that maybe they skipped over. Like, what do you what do you say about that type of that type that type of situation where they they're eleven wins in a row and how are they getting there? Well, that's there's no one else for them to fight. Fought, yeah, if he's fought everybody. There's nobody else for him to fight. That's mm-hmm. one thing. Like I just said, if I'm sitting here waiting for somebody to fight for two or five, and there's nobody. I talk to PFL and Bellator and I say we don't have anybody right now, and I want to stay active. That's one thing. All right, let me go over and fight for heavyweight belt just so I, so I got something going. But if this guy is sitting there waiting to fight me, I'm like, no, nah, I want to go up to heavyweight. Nah, that's wrong. It shouldn't be that way. I got to fight these guys that's hungry that deserve it that I haven't fought yet. Well, one of the guys that's in the 205-pound division that fought in Saudi Arabia and fought well, got a victory, was Yoel Romero. Have you thought about the possibility of them giving a title fight to Yoel for your belt? Yeah, I thought about it. They asked me that in the interview at the post fight, what if you fought in Yo? At the point, like I say, whatever they saying, if it makes sense, I feel it can't do nothing about it. Does it make sense? Like I said, he fought for the belt. He lost and fought a PFL guy. Does it make sense if we get a title a Bellator title fight right off the right again? Like one Bellator fight, lose and come right back again? Does it make sense? No. Will they do it? Possibly. Will I take it? If that's on the contract and that's what we negotiate, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> but uh I actually think they might – I was thinking they would probably possibly try to do Yo versus Carl possibly. I don't know. Or Carl versus or somebody, you know, somebody else up there, that Luke Trainer kid, he's coming up. They get some, one other person to let them see who's going to fight me. Ideally, I would think with the Chicago card they got, me being from the Illinois-Chicago area, they might try to do my first title of defense there. I don't know. You try to think like a businessman, think like they could potentially do – but you're not them, so you never know what they're going to think. It's all assumption. Chicago is in October. October. <laughs> October. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not near. It's not the end of the year. It's towards the end of the year. But, I mean, if they wanted to put me on that Chicago car and I fought sooner, say, I was like, oh, I do too. But I get hurt or something happened in the first fight. I defend the belt. But I get cut or something happened where I'm out, have to get surgery or time to recover. And I miss that Chicago fight, you know what I think? Mm-hmm. And then also on top of the, how much they would have to pay me, they might not want to pay me twice, two more times this year. You know, <laughs> all, you got to think about all that stuff when you sitting back and writing out the plan. I put all that stuff into perspective. What changes, like what positives have you taken away from, from the merger when it's Bellator, PFL? And what are some things that you just kind of like, okay, things have changed that, that are not as positive? I haven't seen any not so positive changes. Like I said, I don't really deal with the people. I don't talk to anybody. I leave that all to Ali, and Ali directly gets to me. My job is to fight. The positive is that we got another roster. You know, we got another roster of guys. And like you said, we have more guys and more opportunity for more fights. And one thing Kogan said when we was there before the weigh-in was like, you guys here, we are Bellator, and Bellator is going to work on growing our roster as well. We're taking guys from there later on. Or assign new guys. We're going to keep growing because we are now two aspects and more more work power, I guess you can say, more opportunities. 
more chances for other fighters to come. Like I said, from PFL over. So you got more opportunities to have more bodies to fight, to stay active more. When you take a look at everything that's happened now between the merger and everything with the PFL and Bellator and everything, as you look at the company, do you has it affected you in any way? Because a lot of people going and working with a different promotion kind of feel a little bit different, but you really you're you're with the same promotion, but there's also different people there. Did it feel the same or did it feel different? I mean, the only thing I felt it was one fate, like other than Mike Hogan, Gloria, it was working with Gloria, uh, Gloria and MJ. They were the same two people. It was just meeting all new faces, like when I was signing in, doing medical stuff, doing payment information. There's just different new faces, signing posters. It was really just a new group of people from, <laughs> it used to be Carrie Ann, Jane, Burt, and I can't remember the other young lady's name. So now I was four new people I was dealing with, four new faces, kid Ed. Like just getting to meet new people and just filling them out. Like, can you play around with these people? Like, I used to play around with Bert, Jane, and Carrie Ann. Like, I can joke around in the office. Like, are they going to be cool with that? Are they going to be super tight and straight to business? Or are they going to be playful? I mean, doing the media work is just the fact of new people. Other than that, it all yeah. seemed the same to me. Fight week is fight week. You couldn't wait. You just anxious to get into the cage and get it over with. There hasn't been, has there been any talk about, um, like, I guess not talk, but I'm, I'm going to go back to what you were talking about with Ali. Is that when you said, would you be interested in going to the PFL when he called and asked you that? There was also a segment, the, the short little brief second where you said, if the PFL bought out your contract, what would that look like? That you're saying that they would just buy your contract and bring you over to the PFL just for the tournament? Or was that mean that you would end up coming back say if you lost in the first round or if you got all the way to the semifinals and then or finals and then you lost there or you won there, whatever it was, would you come back to Bellator after that or no? Well, the way How- Kogamay team is like once we in one, like right now I'm in Bellator and we here for the year. It was like once you do this mm-hmm. event, you guys are Bellator. So welcome to Bellator. If you're new to Bellator for PFL, welcome to Bellator. If you're originally Bellator and you're staying, thank you for staying. Let's continue to grow together. The way it's going to work is – you're going to start this year off as Bellator, and next year, or the other guys start with PFL. Now, after the tournament, those guys in PFL, they can come over to Bellator, and if you want to jump in the tournament next year, you can do that. But right now, it's Bellator or PFL. We operate as two entities. So when I said they're going to buy my contract out, like if I'm signed with PFL, they still going to pay me the same per fight, right, no matter what. Like I'm not going to try to change my contract to jump in the tournament. They're going to pay me less now so I can fight four fights so they don't have to pay me a bunch of money. Like if they're going to pay me that every fight, 100% I'll go. I'll get that four times. My fight, always a championship, that's four fights in seven months making that on top of a million dollars at the end. Sign me up. They buying out my contract. Let's go. That's what I meant. And uh, like I said, Cornel Ali, we didn't go there, but he said, yeah, they would just buy a contract. The contract would say the same. We would say PFL now instead of Bellator. When they had the champs versus champs in Riyadh, it was, uh, what was it, it ended up being 5-1? You know, the, the Bellator guys won, uh, you know, majority of, except for the last fight against Ryan Bader. He came up short against uh, Hannah Fajeda. But that being said, now you have basically, now they're taking the Bellator guys and putting them into the tournament. I've been saying this for a while. Now they're going to start claiming that those Bellator guys are PFL guys and coming back and just to face Bellator guys in the next year's champ versus <laughs> champ. So do we just at the end of the day just say it's all Bellator guys? that are just going to be winning these. Cause I'm looking at these. It's look, I'm looking at the lightweight tournament as well. I mean, you've got, you know, you've got uh clay collar, Patricky Pitbull. You've got Maz Brunel. You've got, um, who else is up in here? JJ Wilson, Adam Piccolotti, Brent Primus, uh, Usman Ramagomedov. I mean, you've got all these guys that are in this tournament. Hold on, sorry, not Usman, Usman, not Usman. Sorry. Okay. Um, like you've got, you've got, got You've got all yeah. these guys like JJ Wilson and Adam Piccolotti are from Godsey Rabotinoff. All three of those guys are from, um, and Brent Primus, four oh. of those guys are from Bellator. I'm going to head on up here. You got Clay Collar and Patricky Pitbull. Patricky Pitbull is obviously from, uh, from, uh, oh. from Bellator. So that's five of our guys and three of their guys. 
this is going to be Bellator versus Bellator next year. I, I like I like how you're saying this is our guys and their guys. We're John, we're not past this yet. Okay, I'm not. We're not past this yet, John. I, I I have not I have not gotten over this trauma. It's not it's not, it's not getting over it. I'm just simply saying, like when when years goes by, when years go by, you know that's we're going to go ahead and start saying, yeah, they're all PFL or all you know, it's all PFL, but still going to be, if they're going to keep it separate, it's going to be PFL versus Bellator. That's the beauty of, I think, this champ versus champ thing. But now they're stealing all the guys that are not the champions that are number one and number two contenders and putting them in the tournament, which is a good thing because those guys are going to have an opportunity to make a lot of money over there. That's great. And then at the end, though, they'll be fighting the Bellator champions. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. I'm going to get myself in trouble by saying this. I can see it. But let's be honest. All the guys that you talked to, some great fighters in Piccolotti and J.J. Wilson, Mm -hmm. And Patricky Pitbull. Uh, you also had uh, Brent Primus in there. Mads Brunel. Maybe Mads Brunel. Lo- love all mm-hmm. of them. But, but which one of those guys is going to beat Alexander Shabli or Usman Nurmagomedov? Yeah, that's true. You're right. I'm just being. I'm just being honest. When I look at it, those guys can win the tournament, and they're absolutely capable. But man, they're going to be up against it and beating one of those other two that's still there at Bellator. Those two. Yeah, they're- can fight. Anywhere with anyone. Yeah. Let's be honest. How do y'all yeah, see that? I, like, lightweight. What? How do you think that's going to go? Usman Which and one? Alexander Shabli. Yep. That's a tough one. That's a tough fight. I'll tell you what. That's a tough one. You know, it's I'm it really Shabli is. I go when I was in Ali. Like, yo, this guy is good. Like, this guy that Usman got a fight next. He's he good. And Ali was like, no, Usman get him. I'm like, oh, yeah. that kid is good. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's he's good. Look, Ali, Ali's look. Ali's biased, and I don't blame him. That's his fighter, and hey, that's what his job is. But he knows. Yeah. Look, he knows how good his that's guy is, and he knows how good that opponent is too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I, I've trained, I've trained with Alexander Shaw. We spar with him, roll with him, grapple. I've done all that. He came to AK he's for a, a while. He's a menace. He's and that was back when he was like twenty years old. You know, and so he's only he's gotten, just gotten, better. He's gotten way better since then. Um, and Usman, I've, I've done some with. He kind of came in towards the end when I was kind of already out, but I still was able to get a couple rounds in with him and, you know, move with him a little bit. Never sparred with him, though. But he's he's very talented as well. He's got he's more of a different style than a Shabli. Obviously, one's a lot heavy, a heavy kicker, a lot of kicking involved, and the other one's more boxing centric. But man, they're fun to watch fight. And then. Both of them, when it comes to the wrestling, Shabli is a dog to take down. Doesn't make it easy. He's got fast hands, sniper. Let's get past the fighting. Let's get into the important stuff. You are a bow man. What bow are you using right now? At the moment, we're using the PSE Evo XF. Uh, during fight camp, they sent me the new PSE. I think it's like the PSE Evolve, whatever. I can't remember. It's a short draw, but they custom built me one with a long draw because my draw is 32 and a half. So when I get okay. back home next week, I'm going to get that tuned up. But uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with them or not. I was partnering with PSC for like five, six years. This is the first year I'm not actually working with them exclusively. Just kind of playing the free agency. You know how it is. And uh, But right now, PSC is just <laughs> in my hands, baby. What, what's what's the pull on that? 70 pounds? Uh, 80 pounds. So my hunting bow is set at 76. Hey, and I got another one. Oh, excuse me. What, what, what's it? What's What's it coming out at? Three hundred fifty? Uh, no, I shoot uh four hundred and eighty four grains on the chrono. It was like three eighteen to three twenty, or wait, three hundred twenty by. Okay, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah three. About right. With a broadhead. Yeah, one hundred grain. Yeah, man, y'all speaking Chinese to me right now. <laughs> you're talking Chinese, bro. Josh, Josh, Josh don't do both. You're all talking. You're speaking Chinese to me right now, bro. I'm like, this is great bro, America, right? Pull. You're talking America as it This is it, baby. That's it, baby. Hey, I got me. I got myself a gun, bro. That's all I need. <laughs> I got a gun. I got a couple of them. I'm good to go, bro. Nah. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Yeah, I've had bows for. Forever, dude. I love bows. Well, it, it's just, I right now I have the Bear um, XE five fifty. It's got a seventy pound pull on it. With I'm about a thirty three inch draw on it. 
Yeah. And uh, I love the thing just because it's so simple and easy and it's just smooth. Bear goes uh, at 30. I, feel, I don't know they had to go past 30. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right now I'm trying all these different <laughs> bowls. You got to try all the new, all the different ones, man. Uh, all right, hey man, have you ever done? Go ahead. You ever done crossbows? I've never. I've hunted. Well, actually, that's a lot. One time, I was out in Texas in a veterans foundation. I work with this foundation, Hero Sports. I used to work with them, and yeah. uh, I didn't bring any of my stuff. I was out there for my family. We had a hunt, and they go, like, "Oh, you want to go? We got an extra PSE crossbow for you." Because I had PSE sent them some equipment, and uh, I shot one buck with a crossbow, and that was it. Never done anything else with a crossbow. Yeah, they hit hard. Well, brother, I want to tell you, thank you so much for coming on here. Congratulations on attaining something that you have deserved for a long time, being a world champion. You are a class act in and out of the cage, and you are now a world championship. The best to you, Corey Anderson. The best to your family. Spend time with them. Josh? It's always a pleasure having you on, man. Last time you and I chatted, you were at the desk working with me giving me a hard time busting my balls at the Bellator desk. And you've been a great guy, man. I enjoy working with you and I love having you on the show. So hope we can get you on before your next fight, my man. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. And it was a good chat. And yeah, I hope I can get on again or get on Absolutely. the conversation table something with y'all. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was fun. Thank you for having me. All right, buddy. Good Take talking to you, brother. Man.